Is the US at risk of facing a UK style market meltdown given its unprecedented levels of government debt? Hello and welcome back to our channel. My name is Daniela and today we are, are going to be talking about US government bonds, talking about the debt in the US government and a recent report that has come out highlighting some of the, these risks for markets. But before we get into it, please like this video, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications and if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. So as I was saying, there is Talk recently about the risk to UK, sorry, to the US economy if it were to face a UK style market meltdown like what we saw in September 2022. Now, there's been a report out from the Congressional Budget Office talking about the unprecedented trajectory that the US government debt is on. Uh, over $25 trillion at the end of last year, expected to be around $35 trillion now. And they say that this could be pushing the uh, US economy towards the style of collapse that we saw of the trust government just over a year and a half ago. Now, a lot of this talk coming because given the high level of interest rates, it kind of pushes the Federal Reserve or it pressures the Federal Reserve to acting conscious when it comes to the repayment of government debt that the US government is facing. So let's take a step back quickly and let's see why there's a lot of talk about this because we know that when investors lose confidence in a government's borrowing abilities, we see a market reaction like what we saw in the UK in September 2022. That came on the back of unfunded tax cuts from the new trust government, as we saw that led to the end of that government. But we saw uh, the pound sinking on that announcement and UK yields pushing higher or spiking dramatically. So there is a risk that this could happen in the US as well. The Congressional Budget Office saying that it's not, we're not, or the US is not quite there just yet, um, but there is a risk of moving in that direction if uh, debt is not controlled soon. I think they're projecting um, a debt to GDP ratio of over 160% over the next 20 years. It currently stands around 97% of GDP. So the, um, the amount of elevated government debt comes from tax cuts that were started in 2017 by the Trump government. And of course, with the global pandemic, it, it, it led to an unprecedented amount of stimulus in the economies worldwide. And that, of course, meant a lot of funding from the US government. Now, the thing is that the more or the higher the risk of the debt, the more premium investors will require or demand to hold this debt. We know in August last year, Fitch downgraded US debt from its AAA level, um, citing the burden that this was having on the US economy. Um, and of course, um, there, there is a risk that we could see further uh, debt levels if Trump were to win the elections. He's already said that he's promised to extend his 2017 tax cuts and also reduce the corporate tax rate from 21 to 15 percent. So that would increase government spending. Um, and the fact is that the, the higher the rates, the more expensive it is to repay government debt. So there's one thing to look at here, the, the government and its debt levels, but also the Federal Reserve and what impact interest rates have on repayments of these debts. Um, now, this large gain in debt has an effect on the economy. It slows growth and it increases the interest payments to foreign holders of US debt. And this is where the risk comes in. Now, there has been speculation that at the Federal Reserve meeting last week, where we saw the dot plot projections still pricing in three rate cuts for the year, and we saw Powell coming to touching upon that and, and suggesting that three rate cuts are to come, even as the economic data came in stronger than expected when it comes to inflation, also um, growth and the tightness of the labor market. There is some speculation that the fact that the Federal Reserve continues to price in, I guess, this strategy of rate cuts soon 
is because they are looking at the debt burden on the US government and trying to alleviate that to some extent in order to avoid a financial meltdown. Now, there has been a lot of talk as well about what impact this will have on the US dollar. Uh, as we know, the US dollar has or is and has been the global reserve currency, but there's been a lot of speculation in recent years about debunking the um, US dollar from the top spot. And in fact, a lot of focus in market recently has been on the performance of gold and Bitcoin to some extent and how strong they've been in the last few weeks, even as the US dollar and yields have remained strong, even as the central banks continue to push back rate push back on rate cuts and economic data comes in strong. Remember, these two are non-yielding assets. And generally, when yields are expected to remain elevated, given the elevated rates, interest rates, they should be weighed upon. But we haven't seen that. We haven't seen that inverse correlation in recent weeks. And some people speculating that investors are flocking towards gold and Bitcoin uh, in order to kind of move away from this US dollar dominance and kind of shield themselves from the turbulence that may come in the coming months if the US debt situation gets worse. So right now, it just seems a lot of speculation, uh, even the Congressional Budget Office just saying that this is something to take to keep an eye out on, not necessarily saying that it's going to happen or, or it's um, a definite scenario, but there is a risk of a large reaction in markets if we were to see this debt uh, continuing to rise, but also if interest rates have to keep on being pushed back because of strong economic data, what impact does that have on the repayment of this debt? And what impact does that have on the US economy? So let's jump onto the charts now to see how the US dollar and yields have been performing. Okay, so let's kick it off with uh, yields and the US dollar. So this is the US dollar on the right, and this is the US 10-year yield. Um, as you can see, we've seen an uptick in both of these, and that was mostly at the beginning of March, well, mid-March, on the back of that stronger data. We had stronger CPI and also PPI. We have a strong labor market and also growth, and all of that pushing yields higher because of those expectations that the Federal Reserve will take longer to cut and will likely cut less than originally expected in 2024. That pushing higher, we've seen a little bit of retracement here in yields, which hasn't correlated in the US dollar in recent sessions. So we have a little bit of a disjointment here between uh, yields and the dollar. And there also is a fair amount of resistance to continue pushing higher in the US dollar. This is the US dollar index here. Um, because, again, of that uh, kind of risk that the uh, U.S. economy faces with these levels of debt. Nonetheless, the fact that the Federal Reserve continues to be, I guess, in a more privileged position when it comes to um, the layout of the U.S. economy in terms of high growth um, and dropping, although high inflation, it's uh, dropping or disinflationary. Um, it's much better than in the UK or the Eurozone, for example, where growth has actually shown some real signs of struggle. So in that, I guess, um, rate differential between countries, the US dollar is still favored and we're seeing a little bit of strength in that. But US yields here starting to show that picture again of um, exhaustion in that rally where we kind of bounced off that high that we saw back here in February. Um, and we have seen that the drops have been more impactful when they have come than the rises. So there is obviously here a little bit of um, skepticism in US bond markets. Let's bring in gold now as well. And let's compare the performance of gold with uh, US yields. As we know, um, they have an inverse relationship. So when yields move up, we should see the price of gold drop. And that has been the case um, for a while. But we've seen some disjointment since the end of last year. I, I marked that here um, a few months ago. We can see that gold rallied higher despite um, higher yields. As investors were looking for safe assets, that was coming at a time of uncertainty in markets. Also, geopolitical risks um, and tensions also pushing gold higher, helping it, maybe masking some of that weakness. But nonetheless, if we look at the recent momentum, we know gold has been in a, in a really strong position 
in the last two months. Um, yields were dropping at first, but even as yields were pushing higher on the back of that stronger data, the pullback that we saw in gold was very, very limited. We saw buyers jump in at the first occasion they could. So ultimately, seeing a lot of appetite for gold, a lot of appetite for safe haven assets or non-yielding assets like gold, like Bitcoin as well. Um, and that, of course, weighing on the bond market, we're seeing some investors shying away from U.S. bonds. Um and that, of course, uh, impacting the market. So as I said, so far, it's simply just speculation and uh, I guess maybe a little bit of warning from some of these watchdogs. But there has been a lot of focus recently on how the Federal Reserve is going to juggle not only maintaining the inflation low, but also making sure that the US government can repay some of its unprecedented levels of debt. That is it for today's analysis. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. 